Hey guys, Shane here from Amen, and today we're going to be having a short tech talk about batteries. So uh, I know when it comes to the hobby, a lot of you have been in the hobby for a very long time, but a number of you are just getting started out. And for that reason, I want to start a tech talk. I'm going to be running one of these once a week just for you guys to brush up and learn a little bit about all the basics of what it is that go into the hobby. And of course, one of the first things that I always get asked about is batteries and charging. My next video is going to be about charging. This video will be about batteries. All right, so let's go and have a look at those batteries today. I did bring two batteries with us today, two Protec batteries. These are both LiPo batteries. One is LiHV and the other one is a regular LiPo battery. But before we get to LiPo batteries, which are one of our most commonly used batteries today, I want to go on over and just start off with a very basic battery, the one that comes in many of the ready-to-run vehicles known as a nickel metal hydride battery, also known as a NIMH battery. Now, we, very, uh, we start there with the NIMH battery because it is in the ready-to-run vehicles. You'll see this most commonly with batteries that come included in a kit, that we often do have those NIMH batteries. So why are those batteries used and not LiPos? So let's look at NIMH batteries. Number one, what you'll notice from NIMH batteries, they are less volatile than our LiPo batteries. That makes them safer and easier to use and also puts them subject to less legislation when being imported from other countries in the kits. And I believe this is one of the big reasons why the manufacturers still today use nickel metal hydride batteries. Now, one of the questions I often get asked is, how do I upgrade my nickel metal hydride ready to run vehicle to be LiPo ready? And we're gonna cover that in just a second because the jumps when you go from a nickel metal hydride battery over to a LiPo battery means that you're gonna get a better discharge, it's gonna be faster, it's gonna be more efficient, and also the batteries generally are slightly lighter as well. So you're getting a much better power to weight ratio in comparison to the nickel metal hydride to the LiPo battery. So a big question then, how come the LiPo batteries aren't included in the ready to run vehicles? A lot of ready to run vehicles are included for first time users, which may be children. They also will be imported internationally, so they really do go through those hazardous materials lists, do the LiPo batteries. So having said that, nickel metal hydride is safer to use, it's a little bit less volatile, it's easier to charge, um, you need a more basic charger as well. So the initial outlay and cost is extremely low when using nickel metal hydride batteries, and you don't need to worry about their volatility as well. So that's why we see those nickel metal hydride batteries. So now you'd like to get a little bit more performance from your ready to run vehicle. Well, the first upgrade that you can do is simple. Just go and get a LiPo battery. Now, one thing that you must be certain of when you do this upgrade is that your ESC is gonna be LiPo capable. It will say that on the spec sheet of the ESC. If you have questions about it or if you wanna know if your ESC is capable, it's gonna be a link down below as well. Please shoot us an email or chat into us anytime and we can help you to determine to see if your ESC is LiPo capable. The big thing with a LiPo capable ESC is that it has a low voltage cutoff point. The reason why this is so important is nickel metal hydride batteries can run from high voltage all the way down until they're completely dead and this will not damage the battery and then you can charge the battery again from completely dead to completely full. Now with LiPo batteries you want to be very careful not to undercharge or to overcharge the battery for the simple reason that this can damage the cells. And when you damage the cells, like I said, LiPo batteries are a little bit more volatile than are the nickel metal hydride batteries. That's why they're on that hazmat list in the first place. And this does mean that you should proceed with caution, number one, when charging and also when installing into your car, considering your ESC. So having said that, like I said, chat in and we'll have a look there for you at that ESC to see if it's LiPo capable, to see if that will be your next inexpensive performance upgrade. So now let's have a look at LiPo batteries as we know them today. LiPo, literally broken down, meaning lithium polymer batteries, because those are the two compounds that are used in order to make the batteries. Today, LiPo batteries are one of your most common batteries used used for performance, for racing, as well as for other applications as well. LiPo batteries though, keep in mind guys, when you do upgrade to a LiPo battery, the other thing that you're going to need from the nickel metal hydride batteries, you need a LiPo specific charger. Now the big win for you when you get a LiPo specific charger is normally that LiPo chargers charge most types of batteries. They normally include lead, they normally include NICAD, they normally include NIMH batteries, LiPo, and some of the newer chargers also will be able to charge these LIHV batteries. We're going to get to these in a second but let's cover over here the normal lipo battery as i said uh, this is a lithium polymer battery very commonly used in today's uh, racing specs and performance specs lithium polymer why do we want a lipo battery and compared to a nickel metal hydride battery simply put performance that's very simply put. We have a higher discharge rate, we have a higher charging rate that it's capable of also, and quite often you can see that on the battery in the C rating. And this is something that I wanted to cover today is, is how to read that battery, because right over here I see quite a bit of information. 7.4 cell, 
excuse me, 7.4 volts, two cell, 4300 mAh, 100 C battery. So what does all of that mean? Well, quite simply put, the 7.4 volts is the voltage at which this battery will operate. Each one of the LiPo cells has a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts per cell. So a one cell is 3.7, a two cell is 7.4, and so on and so on. So a three cell is 11.1, .1, and you can multiply up as you go. Each cell, though, will determine the voltage. So when coming from nickel metal hydride over to LiPo, you must make sure just of two things. Number one, your ESC, as I mentioned, is LiPo capable, and number two, that the voltage is equal to or lower than the battery that you were currently using before that. For the simple reason that, of course, your system can only take a certain number of volts. And if you overvolt it, you will be seeing a little bit of smoke there. So make sure that you very carefully select your batteries, or again, just chat in, and we're always happy to help you guys out with these LiPo batteries, making sure that you guys get the right equipment. So like I said over here, let's, let's have a look at this one. 7.4 volts and two cell, they're really telling us the same information over there as two cells multiplied by 3.7 is 7.4 volts. But we'll notice on the LIHV battery that they change in just a second. So that's why they're actually still listed here. So very important that we note that. Next, we will see on the battery 4300 mAh. mAh stands for milliamp hours, and it literally determines the amount of energy that is in the battery. Ultimately, you can call that the size of your gas tank. So a 4300 milliamp hour battery has less energy in it, for example, than a 5000 milliamp hour battery. And that will have less than a 6000, for example. Now, having said that, in surface vehicles, the longer the milliamp hours or the higher the milliamp hours, the longer your runtime will be. But with drones, it's not always the case, neither with helicopters. So just be careful when choosing your batteries. Again, we're always happy to help you guys out. If you need to know our opinion, chat and call in and we'll help you choose the right battery for you. But in layman's terms over here, when it comes to the surface vehicles, more milliamp hours means more runtime. More runtime means more time at the field and more time at the racetrack and more time racing your car. So we certainly like that. Now the last little bit of information that we see on the battery over there, it says 100 C. Now the higher the C rating, the higher the discharge rating of the battery, the more discharge the battery can take at a sudden burst and also on a continuous burst. Now without getting too technical and going into those terms too much, basically the higher the number, the less internal resistance that that battery has and the better it can discharge. For example, if we had two cars that we're going to drag race sitting side by side, one had a 10C battery and all the other specs were the same and the other one had a 100C battery and all the specs were the same, the cars are identical, only the batteries are different and we both pin it at 100% throttle, of course the 100C battery is going to get away from the 10C battery because it has a higher quick discharge rate and also a higher continuous discharge rate than does the 10C battery. In fact, 10 times that value, as you can see according to the C value. So there we go, we've just covered that over there. And another sticker that we we'll often see on batteries is the raw rating. So I've come to raw rating right now. Raw rating is from the Racing Authority here in the USA and they're basically going to determine all the rules and regulations for which we're going to be running at our big events. And often those big events trickle the rules down and they trickle on down to our smaller club events as well. So we often will see raw and IFMAR rules and legislation and um, regulations being put in place at most tracks. But do make sure, guys, that you check your local track for those regulations and listings because they may be different from track to track. Now, of course, if you're going to be racing at a raw track, you've got to have a raw approved battery. If it's not raw approved, you simply cannot run it. So when we make these batteries, we submit them to raw. They measure the dimensions. They measure the actual physical size, the milliamp hours. They document everything down. They test the internal voltage. They test the C rating, and they see that everything's within spec. And then they approve it, and they put their sticker on it, as you can see over there. If you will race at one of these big events, you must have this sticker, and you are going to be teched if you're going to be at a raw event. So make sure that you have a raw battery if you're going to go to a big event. All right, guys? Now, those are the normal batteries. Now, RAW says that you can run a 7.4 volt battery in your two cell car. That's the voltage cutoff. You may not go higher. You can go lower if you want. Of course, performance is going to be a lot less because the higher the voltage, the better the performance. But we'll see over here now is a new battery on the block and those are the LIHV batteries. So I'll cover these over here. What's the difference between the two? Number one, 7.4 volt, two cell. And number two, 7.6 volt, two cell. Hmm. Didn't you just say the 3.7 is the nominal voltage for a lithium battery? 
Yes, it is. This is still a lithium polymer battery, which is why it says LIHV, which stands for lithium high voltage battery. However, you'll see on the label over there, specifically stated, it says silicone graphene. So what we've done is we've literally removed one of the compounds and components from that battery, from the LiPo battery, and we've put in there a silicone graphene component. And what that does for us is it makes the battery more responsive to charging, more responsive to discharging. You're able to get a higher voltage from the cells as well, and you're also able to use that battery. Um, how can I say? Hmm. You can charge the battery and use it again, and that won't put a lot of wear through the battery cells. It's actually made to be able to take that kind of load. Now, 7.6 volts is not RAW approved, but 6, excuse me, 7, excuse me, 7.6 volts, which this one is, is not RAW approved. Only 7.4 volts is RAW approved. So how on earth did that get a RAW sticker on it? Because that's not legal, is it? Well, it is. But you may not charge the battery using an LIHV charge setting. You must charge on your regular LiPo charge setting, which once again brings me to another very pertinent point. If you want to use LiHV batteries, guys, you've got to make sure that you have an LiHV capable charger. Just like we had with the LiPos, you need a specific charger that's able to charge that higher rate. And again, like we saw with the previous technology going from nickel metal hydride to LiPo, where LiPo batteries can charge all those batteries as well as some others. The same with the LiHV chargers. We're going to be able to charge all LiPo batteries, all the other batteries that we've mentioned, as well as the LIHV batteries as well. So remember, it is a different setting, and if you are going to be racing at a RAW event, you may not charge using the LIHV setting. You must only charge to 7.4 volts, and that makes it RAW approved. Okay, so you can run an LIHV battery, just don't charge it using LIHV. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching today. A very short insert, as you can see here, about batteries, just getting you guys started. My next insert is going to be about chargers. I hope to run one of these videos once a week. So if you like the video down below, like, share, subscribe. I'm going to be posting some links as well to these two particular batteries, which are Protex Shorty Packs that go into uh, two-wheel drive style buggies and a couple of other vehicles too. And uh, you can check those out, check out the specs. If you have any questions, any queries, if you uh, need to get hold of us, please call 1-800-705-2215. Or you can come on down to the website, you can chat in, you can email to us as well, and we're always happy to help you guys out. All right, guys, Shane here from Amain. Hope you guys have a lovely day. We'll see you next time for the charging installment. Have a great day. Bye-bye.